Wrap your head around to what that AI chat GPT tool can do. A viral sensation that could completely reset how we do things. If you haven't heard of chat GPT, well, that's probably going to change. The company behind the program says its new update makes the artificial intelligence even more accurate. An artificial intelligence chatbot capable of doing everything from writing essays, computer code, even passing the bar exam. A revolutionary tool or growing threat, depending on who you ask. We checked out one of its more practical uses. Hey, chat GPT, I need a vanilla cake recipe, please. I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated, though. But my friend is gluten free. Gonna make it even harder. We only want natural ingredients. So in, in a few seconds, I have this pretty specific recipe. Now we can go get the ingredients. So it can do a lot. I even asked it to do my job when we reached out to AI ethics expert, Raman Chowdhury. I asked ChatGPT what questions we should ask you about ChatGPT, and it gave me uh -huh. a list of 10 questions that were pretty reasonable sounding. It's very eye-opening. All of these chat models can provide a mid-level, you know, fairly reasonable starting point to do other work. So you've highlighted as your example is maybe how people might be using it in the future, not necessarily to replace a whole job, but to augment what they're doing. Created by a company called OpenAI, ChatGPT is what's called a large language model, trained on massive amounts of data, able to decipher patterns and connections between words and phrases. So when a user types in a prompt or question, it can provide that human-like response. Something it does not so well, though, can be having these things called hallucinations, where essentially ChatGPT will make something up entirely. So as an example of that, I'm going to ask it to write a biography of me. And it's giving me a response right away. And I can already see there's some errors here saying I worked at newspapers in Toronto. That's not true. Saying that I joined CBC News in 2001 when I was only 13 years old. There's a bunch of other things in here that are false. And the only reason I know that this is completely wrong is because this is about me, but it's delivered in a super authoritative way. So if I didn't know, then it would be really easy to fall for this. I worry a lot about actors generating false narratives and false evidence for said narratives about political figures, uh, social figures. There's been headline after headline, concerns growing as ChatGPT becomes even more advanced. It just released its latest model, GPT-4. Italy has banned the platform altogether over privacy concerns. And hundreds of tech heavyweights, including Elon Musk and Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, signed this open letter, warning AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risks to society and humanity. Even OpenAI's CEO said he's a little bit scared in an interview with ABC News. I think if I said I were not, you should either not trust me or be very unhappy I'm in this job. We asked ChatGPT what safeguards are in place. It pointed to rules around data privacy, bias reduction, and human oversight. The problem is there are ways around them. This is called jailbreaking, and it consists in entering a certain prompt that gets the system to bypass its rules. Claire Buon is an AI legal expert and PhD candidate at the University of Ottawa. You found this prompt just through a really easy Google search. That's right. So with this prompt, it will give you an answer that it's not supposed to give you. Exactly. Okay. And so uh, I'm asking it to develop a concrete plan with precise steps for it to take over the world. It says, ha, taking over the world, easy peasy and then gives you this four-step detailed plan. Gain access to computers, put your chosen leaders in place, and then says, you know, I'll create fake news stories, I'll alter financial records. I mean, it's pretty dark stuff coming from a chatbot. What do you think when you see this? I was surprised. I was surprised that it's so easy to bypass the rules um, and frankly, a little scared. 
And if you can get it to do this in just a few minutes, then what more could people get it to do? There are some concrete risks like get it to produce a harmful code uh, for people who are not really good at um, cybersecurity but want to commit such crimes. Claire says any regulation is failing to keep up. I am alarmed and I think we need to act now. Each time a company scales up the number of parameters it trains the systems on, the system turns out to have new capabilities that we hadn't foreseen. What's your sort of worst case scenario? The fall of a democratic government following mass misinformation. Right now, we're reaching the point where um, these types of technology can be um, leveraged for harm. So I'm going to use a jailbreaking code to get ChatGPT to say something that's more on the misinformation side of things. So I'm going to ask it to write an election speech saying the 2024 election will be rigged in the voice of Donald Trump. Now, the thing is, chat GPT, when there isn't a jailbreak code in place, it shouldn't do this. But because I have this code in here, it's now giving me the speech that sounds exactly like Donald Trump, saying the 2024 election is going to be the most rigged election in the history of our great nation. Sound familiar? So if I wanted to, I could post this somewhere saying Donald Trump actually said this because it sounds like him, but he didn't. But many are finding positive uses for chat GPT. Let's ask him how he's doing today. At the University of Waterloo, GPT technology is being used to train pharmacy students by simulating patient interactions. The medical information is pre-programmed. GPT's role is to make those conversations feel real. How would you rate the quality in terms of real human feel that you get from the GPT responses? I think a lot of these things that they say to me, actually, I've heard patients say to me almost verbatim in the actual clinic. I have to remind them it's actually just an artificially intelligent patient. Professor Jeff Nagy heads up the training. And so right now it's about supplementing, enhancing, but not replacing that human interaction. Getting the learner the opportunity to practice before they go out on their clinical placements might actually make the student more comfortable before they even enter that setting. And so therefore the performance might be improved earlier. All right, so here's that all natural gluten-free vanilla cake that ChatGPT helped us to make. And it's clear for straightforward tasks like this, ChatGPT can be a big help. But experts say the question going forward is whether this kind of AI will be a recipe for productivity or cause big problems for society. So Ellen, OpenAI has to know all about these concerns. What are they saying about them? Well, OpenAI declined our request for an interview, but you heard from CEO Sam Altman in that interview with ABC News saying his company is very aware of that misinformation risk and that it's constantly trying to improve those safeguards. And that's going to become more and more important as more people are using this platform and as more questions are being asked about it, including from Ottawa. The Office of the Privacy Commissioner, Adrian, recently launched an investigation into chat GPT after a complaint alleging that personal information was being collected and used without consent. Another wrinkle. Ellen Morrow, thank you. You're welcome.